Many experts believe that the coronavirus first emerged in a so-called wet market in China where exotic wildlife is often butchered and sold. Those markets were closed as part of the general lockdown, but with the pandemic easing in China, they're returning to life, and that reportedly includes the market in Wuhan linked to the first reported infections. New York Times science and environmental reporter Jim Robbins is the author of the article Destroying Nature Unleashes Infectious Diseases. It theorizes that most epidemics, including AIDS, Ebola, and SARS, are the result of man's interaction with the natural world. You, you've been writing about the ecology of disease for the past 40 <coughs> plus years. What's different about this? We're living in an era that's known as the uh, Anthropocene, which means humans are, are broadening their footprint of the natural world. And the more we kind of invade these, these natural places, the more we open up to, to diseases that come from animals zoonotic diseases is a technical term and we don't have an immune system in a lot of cases that can can deal with these a zoonotic disease is a disease that transfers from from one species to another right it jumps the species barrier from animals into humans bats are believed to may have been the source for the coronavirus so what happens is these bats are out there living in a cave somewhere People go in, they chop down the trees, the bats leave because there's people there, and then maybe they drop a piece of, of half-eaten fruit into a, an animal pen, and uh, or people kill them and eat them, and it passes on to that human. That human goes out and infects his family, his village, and from there goes off into the wild blue yonder all over the world, just like we're seeing here with the coronavirus. Your analogy with Lyme disease was really uh, penetrating for me when you when you eradicate certain predators that you in fact are contributing to a disease spreading throughout you know a core population people came in and built roads and homes not knowing that that they were thinking about the fact that they were forcing predators out of these these forests around cities and so this one particular species called the white-footed mouse is a is a reservoir for Lyme disease and so it, it harbors this disease and it spreads it around now if we had predators um, like foxes and badgers and things like that that are gone they would keep these numbers in check and Lyme disease wouldn't be the problem that it is so we need to understand the basics of how these ecosystems work and try and restore their function somewhat so we can protect ourselves against diseases like Lyme disease or coronavirus have we seen anything like COVID-19 in our past? There have always been viruses that jump the species barrier, but a couple of factors come into play here. Uh, there's people, more people than there ever have been. But the second thing is this international travel that globally is taking off. So the travel, international transport of goods and people is really contributing to this as well. 10,000 people a day in this country retire and they want to travel. Because industry is shut down, we have clear skies, that animals are starting to repopulate certain areas. I mean, is, is Mother Nature is Mother Nature resetting here? And who knows what Mother Nature's intent is? We're not fooling Mother Nature now. We're, we're defying Mother Nature. We're defying these known rules. You can only defy the rules for so long before there's it's payback time. The question is about whether the natural systems are going to survive. And right now, it's dicey. I'm worried. I've covered these issues for 40 years. I just did a story on heat stress in animals. It's taking a toll. Someone likened the disappearance of species to rivets popping on an airplane that's flying. And how many rivets can you lose on that airplane before things start to really go to hell? So... That's my concern. What are some of the large scale changes that need to take place? A fundamental ecological literacy should be taught in every school because these ecosystems sustain us as a species, even if we don't realize it. What would a, an ecologically literate globe look like? Well, I think that this, these principles, the ecology of disease, uh, the importance of predators, uh, the importance of protected areas. I think that would all be fundamental 101. Forests clean our water. Forests clean our air. 
um, for us, protect us from disease. I think it needs to be taught to everyone everywhere. And um, I, based on science, it's the only way to kind of keep us from tearing apart the world. Did folks like you see this coming? Very definitely. It's It's been known for a long time. My story, I wrote it eight years ago. I mean, they knew it then and they warned about it then. And so, yes, this is this has been known to, to be coming. It's just, it's they've been waving their hands and, and people aren't paying attention. An eye-opening perspective there. And Jim said another very relevant example of this is the wildfires in the past year or so. They are getting larger and larger, and we've messed with what he called the natural fire system. We put out a lot of fires and built homes where fires need to burn. So these fires are getting worse and worse because there's so much fuel on the ground, Dana. Yeah, Michelle, I think his airplane analogy was so well said, certainly, and, and made sense for so many of us.